Hi, I'm Bob. Let's complete solving the last five problems for Chapter A, Heteroscedasticity. Problem five is about the linear probability model. For the first question, there's no important difference between the two sets of standard errors. They are close to each other. For part two, holding other factors fixed. If education increases by four years. The estimated probability of smoking will increase by 0.029 times 4 equals 0.116, or 11.6 percentage points. For Park Sri, age appears in quadratics. We can compute the turning point, that is 38.46 years. After that age, another year will reduce the probability of smoking. Holding other factors constant, if a person lives in a state with restaurant smoking restrictions, her probability of smoking is 0.101 lower than the person who lives in a state with dull restaurant smoking restrictions. For the last part, the predicted probability is 0.005 after we plug all the values in the estimated equation. If we define small tilde. As zero, if the predicted probability is less than 0.5, then small tilde equals zero. Since the person is not a smoker, the model gives a correct prediction for this person. Let's find answer to problem six. For the F statistics, the numerator degree of freedom is the number of restrictions. It is k plus one because there are k axes. And one fifty value y hat squared. The denominator degree of freedom is the degree of freedom of the unrestricted model. It is n minus k minus two, because the number of parameters to be estimated is k plus two, including the intercept. For part two, we write down the regressions for the BP test. The white test. And the combined regression. Comparing the combined regression to the BP regression, we find that the combined regression has one more explanatory variable, leading to a higher R squared. Comparing the combined regression to the white regression, we find that the white regression is a special case of the combined regression. To see that, we can write the white regression out by substituting for the y hat. Now we see that the ratios of the coefficients on the axis are fixed. For example, the ratio between the coefficients on x1 and x2 is beta 1 hat over beta 2 hat. That is a restriction on the coefficients. By contrast, there's no restriction in the combined regression. As a result, the R squared from the combined regression is larger than that from the white test. For part three, if we use the LM statistics, the new test. Always delivers a larger LM statistic and a smaller p-value. But using the F statistics makes it uncertain which p-value is smaller.
The fitted value y hat is a linear combination of the x variables. Including it in the model will induce the perfect collinearity problem. We should not add it to the model. Let's solve problem 7. We can write the variance of the composite error into three terms. Since fi and nu ie are uncorrelated, the covariance between them is zero. Then the variance of the composite error mu is the sum of sigma f squared and sigma nu squared. For part two, the covariance between two different composite errors can be written out as four terms. The second and the third terms are zero because the firm specific error f and the individual specific error nu are uncorrelated. The last term is zero because the individual level errors are uncorrelated to each other. So the covariance between different composite errors is the variance of the firm level error term sigma f squared. For part three, the average composite error contains two terms. mi is the number of individuals in firm i. The second term is the within firm average individual specific error. We use the properties of variance. We square a constant when it is taken out of the variance. We can switch the variance sign and the summation sign. Finally, we can get the result. If we have data averaged at the firm level and use the firm size as the weight to run a weighted least squares regression, the transformed model still has heteroscedasticity. Because the transformed error term does not have a constant variance. Let's do problem 8. It is about the child test for the difference in math scores between men and women. For part 1, we test for the difference in all coefficients for men and women. The restricted model is missing, so we could not compute the child statistic. But we could run the restricted regression by ourselves. In stata, we type regress score college GPA SAT. The restricted model is when the null hypothesis holds, that is, the coefficients on male and all the interaction terms are zero. I write it down and save the restricted sum of squared residuals. In the child test, the unrestricted sum of squared residuals can be obtained from two separate regressions, one for men and one for women. Using the child statistic formula, we have the F statistic of 7.25 and its p-value of 0.00008. It is strong evidence against the long hypothesis, and we can conclude that the regression equations are not the same for men and women. For part two, 
we test for the difference in the slope coefficients between men and women. The restricted model is the SIR model because the slope coefficients are restricted to be identical for men and women in that model. The number of restrictions is 2 for the interaction terms. Using the trial statistic, we obtain the F statistic of 1.48 and its p-value is 0.23. We fail to reject the null hypothesis that the slope coefficients are the same for men and women at even the 20% level. In other words, once we allow the difference in the intercept between men and women, there is no significant difference in the slope coefficients. For the last part, we do not have the heteroscedasticity robust standard errors, so it is impossible to compute the robust T and F statistics. Let's find answers to problem 9. It is straightforward to write the y expression in part 1. In part 2, we write the error term mu out into two terms. And then we can show that they are zero. The error term satisfies the zero conditional mean assumption so the OLS estimates are unbiased and consistent. In part 3, we can derive the variance of the error term as a function of the explanatory variable W. So it is heteroscedastic. For part 4, we use the wide estimator of the variance of tau hat to obtain a valid standard error for tau hat. For the last part, after obtaining the OLS residuals, we can estimate the sigma 0 squared using the n0 observations for the outcome y0. Similarly, the sigma 1 squared can be computed using the n1 observations for the outcome y1. Thank you so much for doing the problems with me. See you soon. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.